everyone, welcome to my channel. So today we're gonna to be doing a little Q&A. If this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos, my name's Rachel, thanks for stopping by. I like to make stuff here and since I've primarily been sewing lately, you can expect to see a little bit of personal style chit chat here too. Okay, so almost two weeks ago, I made a post about doing a QA. and a I just thought that since I've been here for about a year and a half now, I thought it'd be fun to do a little Q&A so you guys could ask me some questions, maybe get to know me a little bit better. And you guys asked some really good questions. So I'm hoping to answer all of them today in this video. So first we're gonna be doing more personal questions Questions. Second, we're going to be kind of doing personal style questions and then we're going to finish the video off with a bunch of sewing questions But before I start I just wanted to again say thank you so much for watching my videos Thank you for liking my videos enough to subscribe to my channel when I first decided to start my channel I was just planning on documenting my sewing progress as I started learning how to make stuff But it's been really awesome to be able to talk to you guys and feel like I'm actually part of a sewing community now So thank you so much. All right. Well, let's get into the questions. I have my camera here. So first category is personal questions. Um, the first question is how did you meet your husband? So Patrick and I actually met our first semester freshman year of college. The first time we hung out we went skating with a group of my friends. I was really into longboarding at that time and Patrick had a little cruiser so that was kind of what we did when we first started hanging out with each other in 2009. Okay so the next question has multiple parts. So the first question is how old are you? And I am 32. And how old were you when you first started to sew? So it's kind of tricky. I learned how to use a sewing machine when I was eight years old. My grandma had a sewing machine and she used to do a bunch of sewing projects. So she taught me how to use her sewing machine when I was in the third grade when I was eight years old. And at that point my mom also had a sewing machine so I would kind of just take her scrap fabrics and sew them together and play around with her sewing machine. I jammed it up a lot. I don't really think I remembered how to actually thread it correctly. <laughs> so sorry mom. And then I also took a life skills class in the eighth grade. It was like our home ec class class that everybody had to take and we learned how to use a sewing machine there too so I think that's where I kind of learned the basics of sewing and actually retain that information. We made a little quilted pillow and we had to have our name embroidered on the bottom. My pillow turned out pretty good. It was a really simple project and it was really fun. I also think it's really funny that we had to learn how to use a sewing machine as like an essential life skill because while I do think it's a really useful skill and I think that knowing how to mend things is an essential skill, I also think it's funny that we didn't learn how to use like a needle and thread to just stitch because how many people actually own a sewing machine? I feel like everybody should know how to use a needle and a thread to stitch something. But having a sewing machine is more for like if you're going to do it regularly, I guess. But I definitely think it could have been more beneficial to learn how to like, I don't know, budget, change oil, do taxes, stuff like that. But I'm really glad that I relearned how to use a sewing machine because I don't know if I would have taken the time to learn how to use a sewing machine again. But my first actual project that I decided to do on my own was a shirt that I made for Patrick 14 years ago. I think I made it for a birthday and I actually still have it so I'm gonna show you guys. I don't want to move my cat. My cat is still on my lap. <laughs> Here is the shirt that I made for Patrick 14 years ago. I don't know why I decided to make him a flannel. Actually I know why I made him a flannel because Patrick wore flannels all the time when I met him so as a birthday gift I decided that I was going to make him a flannel and this was such a tricky first project. I'm actually really impressed looking at it now. It turned out pretty good. There are definitely some rough areas and on the inside my seams aren't finished so they're just kind of fraying and I kind of just sewed them down. But I did put little pearl snaps on this. Um, it does have little pockets and has a nice collar on it. Unfortunately, this does not fit Patrick very well at all. I used a pattern from the fabric store and it's a really traditional fit. And since Patrick is tall, he's 6'4", I used the size that went with his height and it ended up being way too boxy on him because Patrick is pretty slim too. So this has never fit him well. He has worn it a few times, just be nice because he knows that I worked hard on it. But now it lives in a box of sentimental clothes in our garage. I actually might have to take it out because I think I want to wear this. I think on me it would just be like a really cozy oversized flannel but yeah it looks kind of silly on Patrick. And then the last part of this question is what advice would you give to new beginners? I guess my first piece of advice would be to just try something to just start and to not be too nervous about it looking bad because most of the time first few projects are going to be rough anyway and to find some really cheap fabric. One way that I like to find really cheap fabric is to just go to the thrift store and get like a bag 
bed sheet or something. You'll want to find something that's woven for your first few projects because knits are really tricky. So try to find some woven fabric, just like cotton or something, and to just make something. I know it can be really nerve wracking to like start a new project and be afraid that you're going to mess up or something. And the chances are you will mess up. I still mess up on every single project that I do. I am really glad that I have a seam ripper. There are a lot of really great tutorials too. So if there are terms that you don't recognize in your sewing pattern instructions, just Google it or go on TikTok or YouTube and look up a tutorial because there are tutorials for almost every skill. So yeah, I guess the way that I've learned how to sew is just by sewing and trying patterns from a lot of different pattern makers because everybody does things differently and you'll find your favorite way to do all sorts of different things that way too. The best way to learn how to sew is by sewing. So the next question is also multi-part. So the first part of it is, do you have a cat? Yes, we have two cats. Um, you just saw one of them, that was Sport. She's our eight-year-old cat, and we also have a six-year-old cat named Noodle. We adopted them two years apart. Let's see. I'm gonna see if I can find Noodle. Okay, so this is Noodle. Can you say hi, Noodle? I just woke her up from a nap, so I kind of feel bad. But they are the sweetest, most social, cats ever. I actually grew up with dogs and I never had a cat so I feel really lucky to have found two cats that kind of act like dogs. So and the next part of the question is what did you study? Was it something creatively related? So yes, I studied fine arts when I was in school. So I took a lot of like painting and drawing classes. Art is what I've been doing my whole entire life. Sewing is something that I've gotten really into just sort of recently. But yes, I've had tons and tons of creative artsy hobbies my entire life. I've actually thought about making a video where I kind of give you guys a tour of like my arts and crafts history. <laughs> and I could show you guys photos of stuff that I've made over the years. So let me know if that sounds like a fun idea Idea. Ever since I was a kid, I was really into drawing and then I took up painting. So I've done like acrylic painting, oil painting, watercolor. I did embroidery for a little bit. I've done ceramics, crocheting, polymer clay jewelry making. I feel like I'm missing some in there too. So yeah, I've been into a lot of different creative hobbies and sewing is just one of them. And the last part of the question is about sewing stretch fabrics. And it says, could you please make a sewing stretch fabrics for dummies video? I don't know if I'm qualified to do that. <laughs> I still consider myself kind of like a beginner sewist. I'm still learning how to use stretch fabrics well. I feel like I've done a pretty good job of applying the knowledge that I already have towards it, but I know that I could be much better at it. I do have a jersey needle that I sometimes use when I use knits. Sometimes it doesn't really work for the fabric that I'm using, but yeah, a lot of people use a jersey needle. And I know you asked also if you need an elastic thread. You don't need elastic thread, but you do need to use a zigzag stitch or a serger. You'll wanna make sure that you don't just use a regular straight stitch because because that kind of stitch doesn't stretch. I have watched a lot of little tutorials on how to use knit fabrics, so if I find a good one, I will make sure to link it below, so hopefully it'll help you too. Okay, I love the next question. Do you know your Enneagram type? I love these types of personality tests. Um, I'm an Enneagram too. I know most people have a wing. I don't really know if I have a wing at this point in my life. The closest wing that I would have would be three, but I do feel like two sort of fits me to a T. But yeah, I love the Enneagram test. I feel like it's one of those personality tests that is really helpful in figuring out kind of how I can be the best version of myself. And also knowing the Enneagrams of my closest friends, significant other, my family members, is super helpful in figuring out how to better communicate with people and understand those people who are close to you too. Also, if you're into Myers-Briggs test, I am an ENFPA. I know that there's like a turbulent and an assertive version and I'm the assertive version of the ENFP. So yeah, I am extroverted, but not in the way that I like to be like the center of attention, life of the party. Um, I don't really like public speaking, even though I have a YouTube channel, but I really feel my best when I'm with somebody, talking to somebody. So yeah, I'm definitely an extrovert, but I wouldn't say that I'm like a loud or outspoken person at all. Okay, so the next question, how's the Bay Area? Any plans on moving back to the Pacific Northwest someday? Um, the Bay Area is a really awesome. So when we were moving away from Boston, we knew we wanted to come back to the West Coast. And at that time, it was kind of between Seattle and the Bay Area. We were originally from Seattle. So it really depended on what city Patrick needed to be in for work. When we decided we were moving to the Bay Area, I was a little bit nervous. I had really not spent much time at all in San Francisco before. So in my mind, it was just like city. And since moving here, we've been really excited to see how much nature there is everywhere you are in San Francisco. It is so, so, pretty here. The weather is awesome. It's really mild. So I've never lived in a place with mild weather. Here's my cat again. <laughs> yeah, winter was really easy here. So living in Seattle and then living in Boston, we definitely have 
four seasons there. I miss parts of that and I think that I'll miss it a little bit this summer, but so far we really love living here. There's really good food here everywhere you go. We're not really sure where we're going to end up for like long, long term, but we definitely want to stay on the West Coast and really like the Bay Area and we know we love Seattle so much, so it's definitely staying on our list. Okay, so a couple of you asked really similar questions. I'm just gonna read both of them at the same time. It says, how do you work and have so much time for sewing? I'd love to fit it into my schedule like you. And then the other question said, how do you manage to do so much sewing with a little kid? I'm just starting and I have two. So I don't know if I've ever explicitly said this on this channel before, but I am a stay at home parent. So Patrick works and then I'm at home with our daughter. And I feel super fortunate to have the option to do that. And with that, I also have a much more flexible schedule than if I were also working a full-time job. So it's definitely a lot easier for me to find pockets of free time throughout my day Even though I am really busy doing a lot of things around the house and with my daughter and with her starting school Recently, it doesn't really provide me with a lot more free time because I'm also really involved with the school And it's not super conveniently located. But yeah, all of that considered I still have to try really hard to find time to sew because I don't like sewing when my daughter's awake or when she's around because it's not super safe when I have pins and a hot iron and my sewing machine right here. She now understands that a lot of this stuff is dangerous so she's really good at being really careful and not touching things even when she is awake while I'm sewing. And now that she's a little bit older, she's also a little bit more independent too. So I can set her up with an activity if I'm just finishing something up on the sewing machine. Yeah, I do try to do most of my sewing when she's either napping or she's asleep for the night. That part's becoming a little bit trickier because she is starting to drop her final nap. So yeah, my strategy for finding time to sew, I feel like is always evolving just because our schedule is always changing. But yeah, for the past two years, she's had one really solid nap in the afternoons that has given me a really reliable window of sewing time as long as everything else that I need to get done in the day has gotten done. So that nap is kind of going away and I'm having to find different pockets of time. Okay, so now we're going to be moving on to the personal style questions. So the first question is, where did you get your color type analyzed? What do you enjoy most about your type? And if you could choose a type, what would it be? So I have never had my color type professionally analyzed. I would love to do that someday. But what I've done so far is just at home draping and really paying close attention to what colors make me look my best and which colors really don't. And I do feel like that's kind of been a lifelong thing. Being a really visual person and doing a lot of art and paying close attention to color. I know why I am drawn to the same colors over and over again when it comes to clothes and it's because I know that they make me look good. Also little things like growing up whenever my mom would go to the cosmetics counter and she would end up getting like the gift with purchase if the sample was like a warm color she would always give it to me because her and my sister are both cool toned and I am warm toned and we've just kind of known that forever my mom is also a really creative person and she was a hairdresser for a long time so I think that's just kind of intuitive for us so yeah I haven't been professionally color analyzed but I do have a decent idea of kind of what looks good on me and what doesn't and when it comes to what I like most about my type I think that I am a true autumn I think that's kind of where I'm settling even though I know I can borrow from summer I know I can borrow a little bit from spring I know that I wear some winter colors and I have to wear makeup when I wear those colors or else I don't look that great but I guess landing in the autumn family the thing that I like most about that being my color season is probably that it goes really well with my personal style anyway so I feel like if I were like a spring or something I would have to think a little bit more about how to incorporate those colors into my personal style because I feel like they don't go as naturally together I guess and if you could choose a type what would it be this is tricky because I really like my color season but I think it would be really fun to be a spring those are still colors that I wear and since I'm warm they don't look terrible on me but sometimes when I want to be just kind of in a happy mood I will wear a spring color because spring colors are just fun and happy colors. Also, I really like summer colors. Also, I really like black. It'd be really awesome to be able to look great in black. I don't know. We're just gonna say spring, even though it would be great to have black as one of my best colors. Okay, and then the next question is, how do you style your hair? I have long hair too, but mine isn't as lightweight and wavy as yours, so what's the secret? Okay, so I don't really have any special method or anything. I've actually been using the same curling irons that I've had since like middle school. I can actually show you guys what they are. Okay, so they're 
these Conair curling irons. I have this one, which I think is like a one inch and a three quarter inch or a one, let's see, three, a one inch and a one and a quarter. I don't know. This one is really little. This one is like slightly bigger. Today I used this one on my hair and I just stuck my hair in two pigtails and I curled the ends and then I let it down and put it in a ponytail. This is what I do when I don't want to spend very long doing my hair and if I know that I'm gonna put it up in a ponytail, that's what I'll do. Otherwise, I'll just section it off, curl it all in the same direction and then shake it out. And then I like this one too because if I want a little bit smaller curls or waves, then I'll use this one. I don't usually use much product in my hair. My scalp is really sensitive, so I don't really use much stuff with like fragrance or anything. This is just kind of what happens with my hair. If I air dry it most of the way, blow dry it, and then curl it. My hair is fine, but it's really dense. I have a lot of fine hair and it's pretty straight. It's It's got a little bit of a wave to it, but not enough wave to be cute like by itself. It's more wavy underneath than it is on top. So I can really easily blow dry it straight. And then I always like to have a little bit of texture in my hair just because I feel like it goes with my overall look a little bit more. Okay, so the next question is really fun. It's where is your jewelry from? It always catches my eye. Well, thank you. So I don't really buy much jewelry. A lot of my jewelry has either been gifted to me or it's been passed down to me. I'll show you some of the most frequently worn jewelry in my videos, just so you know kind of where all of it's from. These little earrings right here used to be my grandma's and they have some silver and some gold in them. And they're just these big chunky hoops. And then these little tiny thin hoops, these are just from Madewell, they're a gold filled hoop. I can probably link these ones down below. This ring right here, was made by my grandpa. So he used to make these stone rings. I have a few of these, but I really like this one. If you know what stone this is, let me know because I don't know what stone this is. This is my wedding band and my engagement ring and it's rose gold. I love having a bezel setting just because I'm really hard on my hands. So I never have to worry about prongs bending or anything. Okay, on the other hand, this is a ring that I got at like a vintage consignment shop. A long long time ago i don't think it's really supposed to go on that part of your finger i think it's supposed to be like a pinky ring or something but i've always liked wearing it there it's just kind of fun and this ring was my first mother's day gift from my husband when i was pregnant so it is the june birthstone which is alexandrite i know that june birthstones also pearl or moonstone but i just think alexandrite is so cool so in natural light it's kind of like a dark turquoise and then an incandescent light it's more purple so it is kind of a color changing stone um the natural stones this one is lab made the natural ones are super super rare and they shift more from like a red to a green so i just love alexandrite and i think it is a really cool stone okay and then i'll show you guys a couple of the other earrings that i wear all the time these ones which i wear pretty much every single day these are another one from my grandma so these were just passed down from her and they are just the perfect kind of medium-sized chunky hoops. These are also my grandma's and I remember her wearing these all the time. They're these other gold hoops and they kind of look like little boats. They're really pretty. She used to wear these all the time. And then these next ones you guys may recognize from one of my other videos. These are some amber drop earrings from a flea market in Connecticut. And I really like these because they have gold on them instead of silver. I feel like you can really easily find amber with silver but not very often with gold. I just love amber so much. It's definitely one of my favorite, favorite stones. Is it a stone? I know that it's sap, so I don't really know if it qualifies as a stone. It's like my favorite. It's so, so pretty. And sometimes you can find amber with like little bugs in it and stuff. And I just think that's so cool. Okay, next are these earrings, which you may have seen in my videos. Patrick got these for me last year and they are so pretty. I love freshwater pearls. I just love how they're always a unique shape and they're just so pretty. I can link these ones down below, I think. If I can find the link for these, I'll link these down below. I love them. And then another pair of earrings from Patrick that I really love wearing are these. He found these at a little boutique near Santa Barbara and I just think they're so pretty. They're just kind of a long drapey earring. But yeah, I just feel like it's really fun to be able to wear jewelry that feels special because it was a gift or passed down from somebody. So fun question. Okay, and the next is, what are your favorite five or so adjectives to describe your style or your brand? Oh, this one is tough because my style changes like every day depending on my mood. I guess I have a few different styles that I gravitate towards. I like to dress practically and comfortably. So I'd say my style is generally 
generally laid back. I like to add earthy elements. I also like to add some sporty elements. And sometimes if I'm dressing up for like a nighttime -y outing, I like to add a little bit of edginess, just a little bit. And I feel like most of my outfits have a little bit of a granola undertone. One style system that I think is really fun is Ellie Jean's Style Roots. So if you're unfamiliar, it's a system that she created herself and it consists of all these elements that connect with certain types of style. I don't really know if I'm describing that well. And using that system, I think my style roots would be mushroom, which is like simple, clean, classic mixed with stone, which is super casual, kind of sporty. And then the third style root would probably be earth for me because I like to add earthy touches, drapey fabrics, textures, and stuff like that. But I'll make sure to link Ellie Jean style roots video down below for you guys, just because it's really fun to watch and maybe it will help you figure out your personal style. Okay, and then the next question is, have you ever shared your kibby? I'm guessing soft, natural, and curious if I'm right. Okay, so back when I filmed my color seasons video, I was really confident in my kibby type so I was like oh I'm gonna make a kibby video and I still plan on doing that but I realized that the more I learn about kibby the more confused I've become a little bit about my type also the more unqualified I feel to speak about kibby so it's a little bit intimidating to make that video at this point but I will make that video I would say I am in the natural family I think I'm pretty sure about that figuring out which type of natural I am has been the tricky part I am pretty confident that I'm not soft natural just because because I do have a little bit of vertical too. I don't think I really have much yin at all, so I don't have lush features. I don't have much curve to my body. So I would say that I'm kind of in between pure natural and flamboyant natural. I would be really confident in pure natural, but David Kibbe eliminated that. For a while, I kind of explored dramatic classic, which maybe I am dramatic classic. I do dress in dramatic classic lines sometimes, and those make me feel good too, but I still think even if I were to dress in DC lines, I would have to be mindful of my shoulder width, which makes me feel like if I did want to settle on one, it would be natural. But all that being said, yeah, I don't think that I fall perfectly within any of these, which I feel like is probably really common for a lot of people. So it's been hard to commit to one of them because I feel like learning more about Kibby has told me not as much exactly what I am, but for sure what I'm not and things to avoid. And I feel like that's been super helpful for me. So yeah, you were really close. Soft natural is a good guess. And when I first took the test. I'll link the test below that I used. I did think I was a soft natural. I think that was just based on my own perception of like my body and my facial features and stuff. Kind of based on how I grew up. I always used to have really round cheeks. I think that I thought my facial features were more rounded than they are and now when I objectively look at my face in the mirror I realize that I am definitely less round than I thought that I was I guess. So it's really hard to look at your body objectively. I don't think it's super healthy for everybody. I do feel like learning about Kibby has helped me to kind of accept my body more and to not get so hard on myself when certain things that look good on other people don't really suit me at all. So yeah, I think for me, maybe it's even made me feel a little bit more confident in my own skin. Okay, so the last personal style question is, I like your style, thank you, especially your use of color and texture, but we have very different body types. So often the patterns you choose are things that I wouldn't gravitate towards. All fine and good, they suit you. But I'm wondering if you have any plus size makers here or on Instagram you follow. I know that a lot of the patterns I choose, I choose them because I know that they work specifically for my body. Even the fact that I have a small chest, I use that to my advantage with the patterns that I choose. So I like to make a lot of backless things or like lower cut things and I don't necessarily have to wear a bra most of the time. So yeah, this is a really good question. There are definitely patterns that I look at and I know wouldn't suit my body and so it's really nice to be able to follow other people on social media that kind of look like me and use patterns that I would also like to use. So a couple people I follow on Instagram, I follow Helen's Closet. This is what her Instagram profile looks like. She has a lot of free sewing patterns as well as other sewing patterns for purchase too. She posts a lot of photos of herself wearing the patterns that she makes and that she uses. So you should definitely check her out. Also, Sarah Bernier, I hope that I'm saying that right. This is her Instagram profile. I really love her style. Her style and my style have a little bit of overlap. She wears a lot of dresses and more recently I've noticed she's been really into floral print. So I've gotten really into floral print and she also makes sewing patterns too, so make sure to check her out. Okay, so the next set of questions is about sewing and why I've started sewing. So the first question is, how long have you been sewing? Did you do any sewing before your YouTube channel? I would say that I have been sewing consistently for a year and a half. I do still feel like a beginner, maybe like a confident beginner at this point. I did some sewing before starting a YouTube channel. I sewed for about six months 
before starting my YouTube channel. I started sewing a lot in the spring of 2022 and over that summer I made a lot of stuff and when people found out that I had made what I was wearing they'd be like oh my gosh how did you make that? So in fall of 2022 I decided to start a YouTube channel just to kind of document my progress and to kind of share with my friends and my family what I'm making and how I'm making it and that's how I started YouTube. Okay so the next question is what made you start sewing? So I was pregnant from 2019 to 2020. When I was six months pregnant is when the pandemic started and lockdowns happened. Oh, I did skip a question. I'll circle back to this question right after this question because um, that just reminded me. I was six months pregnant when the pandemic started and when lockdowns happened. So once I had a baby and you know my body was changing a lot, I just kind of wore what I had already. Plus I got like a couple things for that transitional time. And then once the next spring came, so my daughter was like a year and a half when we were living in Boston, I looked at my clothes and realized that I hadn't replaced anything for a long time and a lot of my clothes were really old or just didn't suit me anymore. So when I started shopping, I was getting really frustrated and it was just really hard to find things that I really like. I was finding things that would do, but nothing that I was really excited about. So I decided I was gonna sew a couple things. I thought that would be fun. So I ended up getting really excited about sewing and then just kind of sewing a whole summer wardrobe over those next few months. Okay, and then the question that I skipped on accident was what did you do for work before having a baby? Immediately before having a baby, I was working in a coffee shop I was a barista and I also did like some packaging design for them and managed their social media accounts And then on top of that, I was also doing some freelance artwork I had a little online shop where I sold greeting cards and polymer clay jewelry and digital drawings So I kind of did a few different things art related for work too So once we moved to Boston, I kind of put a pause on all of that just so I could focus on Parenting and settling into a new place and then I was just kind of doing art for fun at that point Okay, back to the sewing questions. What did you start to sew to begin learning to sew. I guess before I had made clothes, I made pillow covers for a couch and that helped me kind of learn how to install zippers because I wanted them to be zip up so I could wash them. And then I also made a lot of masks. I made masks for myself, my family, and then my friends too. Those were both really easy projects to learn basic sewing skills. So I would say that's kind of what I started with. Okay, so the next question is how did you learn how to sew? I got a couple sewing patterns on Etsy, just print off PDF patterns, and I just kind of started sewing and whenever I would come across something that I didn't know how to do I would look up a little tutorial online and I would just follow the video so yeah I've never really taken a class I think it would be really good for me to take a class just to learn the right way to do some things because I'm sure there are some things that I've been doing like a really difficult way that don't need to be so hard <laughs> but yeah that's how I have learned how to sew and then the next question is what do you enjoy most about sewing so I think it is so cool that I can buy a flat piece of fabric and I can turn it into something wearable so I think my favorite part of sewing is just kind of the transformation that takes place when you're sewing. I think it's really fun and challenging to interpret a pattern and learn new skills to make something. And in addition to that, I really like having cute new things to wear. So I think that it's really cool that as somebody who sews, I can have custom made clothes that are uniquely mine. Okay, so the next question is what was your progression of sewing projects like? What did you start with and what did you choose from there to work on your techniques? Just starting sewing, so looking for any and all beginner tips. Um, I have a video of my whole first year sewing. If you wanna watch it, it's right here. And I go through the oldest things that I made to the newest things that I had made in my first year of sewing. So you can really see every single project that I made. And I explain all of the new techniques that I've learned in each project. I started with really simple things, but also I really tried to push myself in each project to learn new stuff. So I started with cotton cotton fabrics, linen fabrics, and then eventually got into silky fabrics and knit fabrics. I was really nervous to do buttonholes, so I started with projects that just used like a couple buttonholes, and then now I'm able to make something with 11 buttonholes. So if you wanna see the full progression of my first year sewing, make sure to check out that video. Okay, so the next question is, how long have you been making your own clothes? Have you felt you've purchased less clothing because you can sew your own clothes, and has it made you love your own body more? I've been sewing clothes for myself for about a year and a half, and yes, I have barely purchased any clothing since I started. So in my first year sewing, I was sewing mostly just like fun things. And then in this last year sewing, I really started sewing my more practical items too, my like basics. So I made like tank tops and stuff like that. Things that I would normally buy in store. I'm trying to think of how many things that I've actually bought. Pretty much any clothes that I've bought were thrifted. And then I think I bought a pair of jeans. I bought two pairs of jeans this year. And then I bought a couple things when we were moving and I didn't pack 
back enough for the period of time that we had between moving out of our old place and moving into our new place. So seasons were changing and stuff. So I did buy a couple things in there, but otherwise I have really tried to not buy like any clothing over the last year and I've still been able to have new clothes because I've been able to sell them. And then what also contributes to that I think is when I am shopping and I see something I like, I realize that I can sew it. I mean, I definitely don't have all the free time in the world to sew everything that I see that I like, but if I do see something I really like, I can always ask myself that question, like do I wanna just make this instead? And oftentimes I can. So yeah, I've bought a lot fewer items in the past couple of years just because I've been sewing. And has it made you love your own body more? I don't know. I don't know if sewing necessarily has helped me love my body more. Like I said before, learning Kibbe and stuff has helped me understand why certain things don't suit me and it doesn't have anything to do with things that are wrong with my body. There are certain things that suit my body type and certain things that don't. And then yeah, I've been able to make a lot of stuff that I know suits my body. So that's been really nice. Things that I feel like have actually made me love my body more. I would say climbing. I started rock climbing. Uh, almost 10 years ago at this point. Before I started climbing, I was working out because I wanted to like be in shape or look a certain way. And then when I started rock climbing, that mindset really shifted. Rock climbing was a super fun activity, so it was more of a hobby for me than like a workout, but it was also a really good workout. And the stronger I got, the more fun rock climbing was because I could do harder things. I started to become really aware of what my body was capable of doing and that made me more proud of it. But I think the thing that probably has made me love my body the most is having a baby. Before I had a baby, I was really nervous about how I was going to deal with my body changing and what I was gonna feel like but I was really surprised to find that after I had a baby I was so proud of my body and it was so cool to see what it made and how it was able to heal and I just thought that was so cool so I know that wasn't really a part of the question but I do think that discussing body image is really important and at this point in my life I do feel really comfortable with my body and I feel like that is a really big accomplishment for me Okay, and the next question is, do you ever self-draft clothing? I'm not good at self-drafting. I have not learned how to self-draft like officially yet. I have made a couple of self-drafted pieces, but they're not things that I would be able to like turn into a pattern for other people. But yeah, I would love to learn how to self-draft clothing and to make my own patterns. That would be amazing. Okay, so the next question is, hi Rachel, how do you go about choosing a dress pattern? I've just begun to learn sewing and I'd like to make myself a few summer dresses, but have difficulties figuring out how I should get a pattern. Should I get a ready one and try to make it fit me or should I draft a basic bodice and then try to expand on that? Or should I try to recreate a pattern from an existing dress and modify that? I guess they are all valid options options, but what would be the easiest for a beginner in your opinion? I've always found it harder to modify a pattern or modify something that already exists. I know that that's not the case for everybody, but for myself, I think when I was first looking for sewing patterns, I looked for things that were really forgiving with fit. So things that were roomy or oversized or kind of billowy or things that tied. So a lot of the first dresses I made tie in the back or have tie straps or something. And then if I went with a size, it would kind of fit me no matter what because I was able to tie it into place. Oh, and things with elastic are much easier to fit. So if I were to make a pair of pants, have an elastic waist, or if I made a skirt, I would have an elastic waistband. So yeah, elastic Plastic ties, flowy silhouettes. Those are all really good things to start with if you are wanting to start sewing but aren't really confident in your abilities to fit a dress perfectly to your body. All right, next question. How did you decide to start and push through with starting YouTube? I've been wanting to document my sewing journey on YouTube, but I just don't feel like I have what it takes to get started. I kind of already mentioned why I started YouTube and starting a YouTube channel, I definitely didn't feel like I knew what I was doing. I still don't really feel like I know what I'm doing. I don't have really fancy recording equipment. I have my camera, which I really love. I have a little light right here that my husband used to use for recording videos, but I don't have an external mic or anything that I use right now. So to me, it's been really awesome to be able to watch back and see my progress through videos and also just to have like documentation of my progress. Also it's been really awesome to be able to talk to people in comments and get advice from people and to just chat about sewing with other people because I have a few friends that sew but now I have like a whole community of people who also like sewing that I can talk to on YouTube so I think it's a great idea. You should do it.
Okay, and the next question is, what are your YouTube dreams? That is a great question, and I don't really know if I have any specific YouTube dreams. I probably should. I really like what I'm doing on YouTube right now, and so if I could sustain this and maybe get a little bit more organized with coming out with videos on a schedule, that would be great. Long term, I don't really know. Maybe doing some collabs with other sewing YouTubers would be really fun. But right now, I'm just like trying to become more structured with filming and editing and coming up with a schedule for uploading, which has been super, super hard for me. So I think at the moment that is my YouTube dream. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, how do you sew with a toddler? All of your tips and tricks to help make time and get them not to play with the sewing machine if and when they are around and you need to use it. <sighs> she knows that the stuff that I use is dangerous. So I have really told her, I've showed her all the pokey parts on the machine. I always keep my machine off. Um, sometimes I even just unplug it. Also, my sewing stuff is in a really central part of our house so I can always see this area of our house and I know if she's in here or not so that I think it's really helpful. I also keep all of my sharp objects like way back here behind my sewing machine so she would have to climb up this tall stool over this desk and then get behind my sewing machine to get to that and by that point I would definitely know she was there but also I feel like I'm just really lucky because yeah after having those conversations with her explaining where everything dangerous is right here she's been really good at following those directions. So I wish I had more advice. Also, I have showed her my machine in action and explained to her how it's able to do what it does, how it stabs through the fabric, and it could also stab through skin. So she understands all of that and she will stay away from this stuff unless I'm sitting here sewing and then she will sit next to me over here. Okay, next is where are you finding inspiration to sew? I can see your shopping patterns on Etsy, but are you interested in any indie popular companies or big five, please? One of the reasons I shop on Etsy a lot for patterns is because they're printable PDF patterns and that's just really convenient for me. So that being said, I haven't really shopped a lot of the big five patterns. Um, also, I'm not really sure what indie popular companies are. I'm still a beginner, so I'm still kind of learning about all of these companies. I don't know, is Friday Pattern Company an indie popular company? I think that that's one of them and I have looked at some of their sewing patterns that I wanna use. Um, if there are indie popular sewing companies that you recommend, then let me know in the comments. And as for inspiration for my sewing projects, I look on Pinterest a lot for just like outfit ideas and stuff. I like to sew things that I know I'm gonna wear a lot. So most of the things that I sew are just things that are probably inspired by like outfits that I see on Pinterest and stuff. Also, I am inspired by holes that I find in my wardrobe. So recently I figured out that I don't really have many blouses, so I really wanna make some blouses, also some skirts. I don't really have many skirts and I wanna wear more skirts. So those types of things inspire my sewing projects as well. And then of course, seeing other sewing projects projects from other creators online too. And yeah, I had a couple other questions very similar. Where do you get your inspiration? You have such great taste in patterns. Thank you, and fabrics. How do you find inspiration? I hope I answered those questions as well. Uh, I wanna start sewing again and don't know where to start. Any recommendations? I think I already answered this question too. I hope that I have. Just starting with a simple sewing pattern. And I think trying sewing patterns from different sewing pattern designers is really helpful just to figure out lots of different ways to put a garment together. Next question. There are a few questions like this. So which other sewing and sewist channels do you follow and watch? Oh, also where are you from? So I was born in Seattle. I grew up in Spokane, Washington, and then I'm moved back to Seattle for a long time. So I guess uh, Washington State, I'm from Washington State. Okay, so let's see. On YouTube, I am subscribed. How do I look up everybody I'm subscribed to? So I follow The Essentials Club. I follow uh, Kate Makes. I follow Raven Maureen. I follow Tobias Conrath. He makes all the tropical research sewing patterns. I follow Jenna Phipps. I follow Lydia Naomi. I love her dress patterns and I've yet to use one and I need to. Um, I follow Steph Time on YouTube. I follow Pattern Scout. I follow Alexandra Burnett. And then the first sewing channel that I ever really watched a lot was with Wendy. I remember watching some of her videos like years and years ago, making like basic tank tops and stuff. But yeah, I have always really loved her videos. And yeah, that's just what I have on my, oh, here's the all button. Oh my gosh, there are so many. Okay, those are the YouTubers that are at the top of my subscription feed. There are so many other sewing YouTubers that I follow too that I didn't mention. If there are any others that I highly recommend, I'll make sure to link them below too. Okay, the next question is 
is which patterns do you recommend and which you don't on Etsy? I don't really know if there are specific patterns that I don't recommend. I would say when I'm looking for a pattern on Etsy, I look at reviews. It's really telling if there are a lot of reviews that are saying like the fit is off or like the explanation is really confusing. I really like good directions since I am a beginner. So that's usually what I'm looking for. Also, I look on YouTube and see if there are tutorials or if there are other people who have made something with that same pattern before. If it's a pattern shop that has a ton of really cheap patterns, I usually assume that their instructions aren't super detailed. Pattern makers that put a lot of effort into writing really good instructions can't possibly make like a million patterns priced at like $2. I guess that's the way that I think about it. I think that the more experienced I get, the fewer details I need in instructions. So I'm still at the point where I really like good detailed instructions. So that is kind of what I like to be able to predict when I'm buying a sewing pattern. Where do you find men's patterns? Seems like men's attire is more limited and I really love to make clothes for my husband and son. I haven't really made a ton of men's clothing, but the couple pattern shops that I've used, I've really liked. So I've used Wardrobe by Me. They make a lot of men's patterns and I've made a couple shirts for my husband that fit him perfectly and the instructions are really great. Sometimes they even have YouTube tutorials too, so that's really helpful. And then the other pattern shop, like I've mentioned before, is Tropical Research. Tobias has made a few unisex patterns, so I have a couple of those and I plan on using those for both Patrick and I. But if anybody watching this has any other recommendations for men's patterns, let me know because I am always on the hunt too. Okay, how do you know what type of fabric to use for each project? I understand the difference between woven and knits, but then what type of woven or knit? And then I have another question that says, what's your favorite fabric to wear and to work with? Um, I have just paid a lot of attention to how fabric moves when I'm wearing it. And so when I'm shopping for fabric, I try to touch it a lot and I try to move it and kind of see if it reminds me of things that I already own that I wear. Something else that I've kind of noticed noticed is that fabric always feels thinner on the bolt than it does once it's actually like constructed into something. So if I want something that's really lightweight, it needs to feel really lightweight before it's been made into anything. I think that the way that I go about it at this point is just kind of thinking about what the garments that I really like are made out of and what type of garment they are and then trying to find similar fabric if I'm making a garment similar to that thing that I like. I don't know if I explained that really well. So yeah, I guess I try to make sure that the fabric has the right drape and is the right weight. Also when you're using knits, certain patterns require more or less stretch depending on the type of garment you're making too. So that makes a difference when you're choosing fabric. I think my favorite fabrics to wear are lightweight linens and I really love like silky drapey fabrics. So lately I've been really liking viscose. I really like the drape that viscose offers but then also kind of feels like linen too. So I think that those are two of my favorite fabrics to wear. Okay, next question is how do you combat the soreness that comes from a lot of time at the sewing machine? my neck. Okay, so first thing is I'm never at the sewing machine for a super long time because the periods of time that I'm sewing are usually just like an hour or two. So I think that that is one part of combating the soreness is just breaking up periods of time that I'm able to sew. I think that I would probably have more issues if I could sit at a sewing machine for like five hours every day, but I can't. I just, my schedule does not allow it. So I think that's one of the things, but also moving my body a lot when I'm not sewing. I go on a lot of walks, I lift weights, I do some yoga. I would really Really like to get back into climbing but since we've moved we haven't found a gym that we really like going to but yeah doing yoga at home has been really nice lately I'm getting back into that which has felt really good I also think that having a stool rather than like a chair that I can like sink into and hunch helps sitting on a stool I usually sit kind of like on the edge of it when I'm sewing which I feel like makes me kind of sit up a little bit straighter than I normally would if I had a really comfy chair to sew in so any tips for sewing with thin fabric avoiding getting it sucked into the bobbin I don't feel like I've used really thin Thin fabrics. Yeah, I've used a couple really thin fabrics, I guess, and I've never really had that issue with my particular machine, but I have seen a couple things of people using like tissue paper. Also, there's this little video by Jerry and Stitches. Um, this is really interesting to me. I've never tried this, but she basically dunks her fabric into gelatin and then lets it dry and then will sew with it and then wash it and then it's that silky fabric again. It's really intriguing. I think that it'd be really fun to try this at some point. If you are interested, just watch this video. And if any of you have tried this method, let me know because I would love to hear about it. Okay, and the next question is how do you find the grain line on a sheet that you plan to cut out a dress pattern? I have never thought about this before. I honestly, I don't really think about grain line as much as I should and I don't really know how to identify a grain line. So usually when I'm cutting out fabric after I've just bought a new piece of fabric, I just try to cut it out in the way that's the most efficient in terms of like fabric usage and I just kind of apply that same idea to a sheet if I thrifted 
the sheet. And then when I use stretchy fabrics, I always have to pull on it to see which way has the most stretch. And then I'll make sure that that fabric is horizontal so that it can stretch the most around my body. Um, I know I don't have a good answer for that question and that's just because I'm not there yet. <laughs> so yeah, that is one reason why I still consider myself a beginner. I just don't pay attention to things like that quite yet, even though I should. Okay, so this is another good question. If you see a fabric you like, do you normally have an idea of what you want to make before purchasing? If not, how much fabric would you buy for a future unknown project? So I wouldn't say that I always have an idea and then I go shopping for that fabric because a lot of the time um, I try to use fabric that I already have. But when I do shop for fabric, it's usually because I see some fabric that I really love and then I'm inspired to make something. So I usually have an image of what I want to make with that fabric in my head when I'm purchasing it. If I don't, I don't know. It's hard because I'm still trying to figure this out too. I actually bought a couple new fabrics today. I can show you guys those just for fun, but I'm still trying to figure that same thing out. I'd say if I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, I'd probably get like three yards of fabric. I know that's quite a bit, but if I wanted to make like a set or something, then I think that three yards could make that work. Or if I wanted to make a dress or something, then three yards would usually be enough. Today, I got four yards of two different fabrics because I want to make a set with one and then the other one, I have no idea what kind of dress that I wanna make, but I had to get it because I know that I'm gonna to wanna to make a dress with it. Depending on the level of detail of the dress, I could need a full four yards. So I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, so this first one, I know exactly what I'm making out of this. I'm making a little set. I got four yards of this because I know that even after I'm done making the little set, I'm gonna make something else with this because I just love it so much. This is a viscose blend. It's really, really drapey. It's super lightweight and just airy and it's so soft. And this is what it looks like. It just has this really pretty floral print. I feel like it's just a really nice like bold floral print. Like it's a bigger floral print which I feel like suits me more than like a teeny tiny floral print and it's in the colors that I really love to wear. And this is the fancier fabric that I want to make a dress out of at some point. So these are colors that I don't usually wear but I think they're so pretty. Oh, look at this. This is so beautiful. These aren't usually the colors I wear, but I think that they look pretty good. I don't think they look bad on me at all. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this fabric, and I got four yards because I know that I will want to make a dress out of this, and I don't know the length of the dress or what type of dress I'm gonna wanna make, but I want to make sure that I have enough because I don't think that I'm gonna be able to get this fabric again in the future because I think it's just like a seasonal fabric. I got both of these at Joann's, so sometimes when they get new fabric in for the season, then once they're gone, they move on to the next season and they won't get those same fabrics. So I wanted to make sure to get this, even though I have no use for this fabric at the moment. I really need to be invited to a fabulous wedding or go on a really fancy lunch date or something. So I will use that fabric at some point. Okay, so the next set of questions is about like my sewing equipment and sewing setup and recommendations and stuff like that. So I think I'm gonna finish filming that a little bit later tonight because I need to go right now. So I will see you guys then. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay, so I had dinner. I got my daughter to sleep and everything. Um, I'm wearing the shirt now, so it's very cozy. It is oversized just the way I like it. So I feel like I'm actually going to wear this shirt quite a bit now that I dug it out of storage. So um, I'm glad that I did that. So next, I'm going to answer all the questions involving equipment that I use and equipment that I recommend. So first question is, what sewing machine and serger do you use? Pros and cons of each. This is the baby lock nine sewing machine um my mother-in-law got this for me for my birthday um i want to say eight years ago it was before patrick and i were married it was eight or nine years ago and i love this sewing machine in terms of a sewing machine as a beginner i pretty much have no complaints at all of course if you want a fancier sewing machine there are sewing machines with way more features than this but the things that i love about the sewing machine this is a really reliable sewing machine i've never had any issues with it at all it actually gets through pretty much everything. I think that the only thing that it has really ever struggled with is getting through multiple layers of super thick canvas, which I feel like most machines would struggle with. So yeah, it's a super solid machine. I love that it's a mechanical machine, so it has all these little dials instead of like a touch screen and stuff. It has your very basic stitches. It can do a four-step buttonhole. So I know a lot of people really like the one-step buttonhole, but I really like the four-step buttonhole because I feel like you have a little bit more control. I guess as a beginner, I don't really know of all of the other features that you could potentially have in a sewing machine. In order to change the bobbin tension on my sewing machine, you actually have to take the bobbin out and use 
a little screwdriver. You do have to change the tension by just adjusting this little screw right here. So that's the only thing that I feel like would be really nice to have at this point is just a bobbin tension adjusting knob. I don't really mind how simple this machine is. I actually really like that it's simple because it never has issues ever. Yeah, I guess one thing a lot of people like is having a top loading bobbin with that clear plate above it so you can see how much thread you still have left on your bobbin. Mine is just front loading so I never know how much thread is left on my bobbin and sometimes I find out after I think I've been sewing for a while. That doesn't really bother me that much. I still don't really think I would pay much attention to it if I could see how much thread was left on my bobbin anyway. But yeah, of course that's frustrating but it's really not that big of a deal to me. Also, just having a few different stitch options. I think at this point in sewing, I don't really need a lot of stitch options. I feel like that would maybe even be a little bit overwhelming to me. I will be using this sewing machine for a really long time. I do recommend it to a lot of people who want a really solid, affordable beginner sewing machine. I don't really feel the need to replace it anytime soon. I love the sewing machine. And then for my serger, this is a Hobby Lock 787. So my mother-in-law helped my husband find this on eBay for Christmas. This is actually the one that my mother-in-law has been using for decades and um, it's just a really reliable serger. This is the only serger that I've ever used, so I don't really know what other features are available on other newer sergers. I just really love how reliable this has been, how straightforward it is to thread. I mean, threading a serger is never easy. I guess they do make some sergers that thread themselves. <laughs> I don't really know if that's necessary since I very rarely re-thread this. And then I've also received a couple tips on how to thread it faster by just clipping these and then tying new thread on and then pulling it through. But yeah, even though this serger is pretty old, it works perfectly. It still had all of its original tools with it. I don't even really think that it had been used. The blade on it is still super sharp. Everything works perfect. I have had to tighten a couple things on this, but it hasn't been really hard to find. There's a lot of information on how to maintain this machine online. But yeah, I really love this machine. I don't think it's very easy to find now, so I don't know if I can necessarily recommend it, but yes, I love my serger. What sewing machine should I buy as a beginner? Also, what other equipment and tools do you recommend purchasing and the other one said hi I'm looking for an overlock machine which one would you recommend for beginners I don't really have much experience using other machines so I don't really think I can really give advice in terms of which machines you could buy as a beginner I guess I could say that this machine right here is one that I really love and that I would recommend I don't really know what other machines are out there and what it's like working with those machines. I will go over the equipment that I recommend for beginners to have, just like the basic equipment. So of course, a sewing machine. I don't think you need a serger to start sewing, although it's super nice to have one now that I am more into sewing. Uh, let's see, a good pair of fabric scissors. I have the Ginger scissors. I have a couple pairs of these and I really, really love these. They just feel really nice and heavy and super sharp. And then something that I use all the time, a rotary cutter. So for a long time, I just use my regular fabric scissors for cutting out fabric with patterns, but I really love using a rotary cutter with a self-healing mat. So this is my cutting mat, and this has worked for me for the past almost two years. I do think that I want to get one that's a little bit bigger than this, but these kind of came as a set with another big, huge ruler too. So this is super nice to have, especially with silky fabrics and stuff, because you're not warping the fabric as you're cutting it. You're just able to lay it flat and cut out a shape, but I do use this with all sorts of fabrics. I still use my regular fabric scissors all the time too. I use these together, but yeah, this has made cutting out fabric super easy for me. Okay, a couple other things. Okay, so I will show you guys my loop turner. So I have a couple of these. These are made for turning out straps, like turning them inside out. This is not an essential item. I do use it sometimes. It's good for certain things. It has this little hook on the end that I can never really get to work correctly. I actually prefer using bobby pins. I have a set of bobby pins in here because I use them all the time to turn out straps. Okay, and next I have some pins. So any pins will work. You just need some pins. And this is called a magic pin. They're just super, super long and thin and pokey and they have a nice little grippy handle. They're really flexible too, which I really like. So I'll make sure to link these below. I have used the kind that just have the little ball at the end and that's like that. I find that these magic pins are much easier to grip on too than this little thing. So another reason I really like having these pins is that I have two cats and I have a kid. So if I ever drop one of these on the floor, I really want it to be super visible so I can pick it up. So that's another reason why I really like these pins. I got these as a gift and I need to get new ones because I've used these for every project for 
for the past year and a half. As an alternative to pins or in addition to pins, I have these little clips right here. So these are really great for if I just need to clip together some fabric really quickly. I really like these. They're just really convenient and they're really quick. I've broken a lot of these, but they're super worth it because they're really easy to use. Okay, and then in terms of needles, there are so many different types of sewing needles and I have a whole bunch of different ones, but I really recommend getting just a set of these like universal needles. You can get them in this little pack that has a bunch of different types of these. I have a couple broken ones in here. It's really good to have backup needles because you will break a needle at some point. And then also it's nice to have needles of different thicknesses to use on different types of fabric. So I recommend these if you're a beginner. Of course, as you get more into sewing and you want more specialized needles, there are all sorts of different types of needles that you can get and I have a whole bunch of different ones. Um, also just get a pack of needles that you can sew with by hand because there will be some hand stitching that you need to do on certain projects. Okay, and the next thing that you will need if you start sewing is a measuring tape of some sort. This is my measuring tape. It is pretty worn out. I know that in one part, oh yeah, it's split right here. And then also, the first two inches have been ironed, so they're all melted. I, I always say that I need a new measuring tape, but this one is still working for me because I'll just start at the two and then I will subtract two inches from whatever I measure at. But yeah, you'll want to make sure that you have a measuring tape to measure yourself for self-drafting or using a pattern to figure out what size you need to make. This is my little case that I carry my bobbins in. So there's all my bobbins at the moment, beautiful colors. And then I also have a case for all of my thread. I have a whole bunch of thread. In my other sewing bag, I have backups for black and white, but then in this, I have all my different colors. These are nice to have. Obviously, you don't really need proper packaging for your bobbins and your thread to start sewing, but I just wanna show you guys those. This is an iron. <laughs> This is really important to have because one thing that makes a huge difference with how your project turns out and like how professional it ends up looking is making sure that you are pressing your seams as you're sewing. Ironing is probably the most annoying part of sewing for me, but makes such a huge difference. I've told Patrick this before, when I'm saying that I'm going to be sewing for the next couple hours, I'm usually ironing and pinning for most of the time, and then I'm doing a little bit of sewing. So yeah, it is really important to have an iron. This is the iron that we use for all of our clothes at home, and I also have an ironing board. I know that you can get an ironing pad if you wanted to put that on the table or something, which I would love to do eventually if I have like a full ironing station, like a full sewing room. That would be one of my sewing dreams, to have a sewing room with an ironing station. But yeah, that's my iron. A couple of little tools that seem kind of silly to be using, I use just a washable Crayola marker to do a lot of marking on my fabric if I need to mark where to put pockets or notches or something. I know that they make fancier pens for this. I know that they make like disappearing ink and all sorts of stuff like that. I just use one of these because this is what I have at my house and I have not been motivated enough to buy one of those other pens. I just use this yellow washable marker. It washes out super easily. Okay, and then just recently I started using the glue stick for things like attaching pockets or instead of doing basting stitches, you can use glue stick. I saw this TikTok right here and it's like illegal sewing hacks and this was one of the sewing hacks that it had on that TikTok and it actually works and I just thought that it was genius when I saw it because it makes putting on pockets so easy. You don't have to worry about pocket wiggling around as you're sewing it around because it's already glued onto your fabric. So I really like having a glue stick. Definitely not a necessity but it will make certain things a little bit easier especially if you're starting out. I'll make sure to link that video below if I can figure out how to link a TikTok. I wish that I would have started using a glue stick and sewing a lot earlier. This is a nice thing to have. I also forgot to mention a seam ripper. So this is actually what I use as my seam ripper. So it's a little pair of snips and it has a seam ripper on it too. So I also used to have a traditional seam ripper that I used in addition to this, but it recently broke. So I need to get a new one of those. And I also need to figure out how to sharpen this because this is kind of dull now because I've used it so much. So it doesn't really snip as well as it used to. Yeah, make sure you have a seam ripper because you're gonna need it a lot, especially when just starting sewing. Okay, so I think that that covers like the beginner essentials and then a couple extras. Okay, so can you show us your sewing space and how you organize your tools, fabric, etc., or just give some tips? I will show you guys my sewing space. It's not super perfectly clean right now, but I will show you guys. Okay, so the first time I filmed this part of the video, it was super shaky and really dark in here. So this is my little sewing space. This is our dining room. I just recently got this cube storage thing. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. It's just the Ikea Calyx. It's got 
eight little cubes in it. So I have fabric in these. This one just has scrap fabrics. This is like some polyfill stuff. I've got some silky fabrics in here. I have kind of a bunch of clothes and stuff that I wanna upcycle and use as fabric. In here, we have like cozier knits. In this one, I have other knits, my brushed jersey fabrics and everything. And then in here, I've got thread, bobbins, some dyes, just more of like the random stuff that I have. And this one has all of my thrifted bed sheets and stuff that I'm gonna be using. So I think this has zippers in it. it. Has zippers and like little tiny notions and stuff, cover buttons, grommets. And then this is just full of all of my acrylic paints and stuff. This one right here has elastic, and in here there's like bias tape and stuff like that. And we've got webbing. This is the sewing pattern I use for my daughter's stretch pants. So this is just part of a pair of pants she already had that I took apart and I just trace these and I make her a bunch of stretchy pants. And then I have all of this hardware. So this is hardware that I got at a little store in Cambridge, Massachusetts when we lived over there. It's called Gather Here and I haven't been able to find this hardware anywhere else yet. So I stocked up before we moved. These are all my buttons. So I have just a whole bunch of buttons in here. I keep my iron right here. I usually set up my ironing board right here and then I just plug in down here. And then here is my sewing desk. So I've got my sewing machine, my serger, and then back here I've got all sorts of random tools, all of my sharp tools, other tools. And then in here I've got all sorts of other things like clips and pins and then all of the little tools that came with my sewing machine. So I've also got more fabric in this cube storage here. So I've got a bunch of cotton. Here's like all my block printed cotton. We have all my linen and here's some more cozy knits. And then in here I have like thicker fabrics and like outdoor fabrics and stuff too. And then back here I've got just a bunch of fabric that I'm currently using and I've got like my tripod, my light. And then this is what I am currently keeping all of my sewing patterns in. I need to get a new one because it's like breaking from moving but this is just like an art portfolio. Um, and then right here I have a painting that I'm working on. I'm filming this so you guys will probably see this in a video. There's a balloon. Okay, the next part of the question was, am I working on any challenging projects right now? And yes, I am. So there are a few other projects that I've been working on, just like making some spring clothes and stuff. But one thing that I'm doing that's new and challenging is quilting. So I'm actually making a quilted jacket right now. And I have been looking at thrift stores for a quilt, but I haven't found the perfect one yet. I really haven't found that many quilts at all. I think a lot of people have bought up quilts making quilted jackets. And yeah, I just haven't been super lucky to find a really perfect quilt. Also, I think that if I were to find the perfect quilt, I'd be a little bit too nervous to cut into it and make a jacket out of it. So instead, I've decided that I'm going to make all of my own quilting for my quilt jacket. And none of the quilting blocks are going to match perfectly. I think they're all gonna be a little bit different and they're gonna be different sizes and I'm just gonna kind of put them together because I really wanna try a lot of different types of quilting designs just to see what I think about quilting and to give it a really good try. So I'm gonna show you guys a few of the quilt blocks that I've already made. Okay, so here they are so far. So as you can tell, there isn't like a super focused color palette, but it is somewhat limited. I made this, which is just like checkered print. Oh, I made this one and I really like this one. So I have some of my Indian block printed fabric in this one. And I actually dyed this and this. All the solid cotton fabric is like our old bed sheet. So I have dyed parts of that. So there's one of them. Here's one that's really fun. This was the first one that I ever did. And this is probably the most complicated one that I have here. Well, it's just as complicated as these ones. Here it is. I'm using some of my block printed fabric because I love just how these look together. So that is what I have so far. I feel like it takes me like an hour or so to do each of these. I'm just going to be chipping away at this for a long time until I have enough to put together to make a jacket. This is gonna be kind of a wild jacket, but it's gonna be really fun to wear. So far, quilting has been an adventure. I feel like it's definitely going to make me better at sewing in terms of precision, and it really forces me to do a lot of really accurate measurings. I don't think that I'm going to become a quilter, but I'm really motivated to make this jacket, so that is why I'm learning how to do it. So the next question is, what are your favorite places to purchase fabric? I think in my first year of sewing especially, I purchased a lot of fabric from Joanne Fabrics. I have coupons all the time and it's just really easy to go there and know where everything is because I've grown up going 
to join fabrics. So I do buy a lot of fabric there. I love thrifting fabric if I can find good fabric at the thrift store. I like to look through the bed sheets and other linens because oftentimes you'll be able to find like 100% linen, 100% cotton priced the same as the polyester or microfiber bed sheets. Recently I got 100% linen duvet cover and it's white linen and I brought it home and I used some vinegar on it in the washing machine to soften it up because it was super like starched. It was really crisp and now it is the perfect white linen that I would have bought for like, I don't know, $20 a yard and I got it for $4. So yeah, thrift stores are great for finding fabric, especially if you're on a budget or you're trying to shop sustainably. And then when we lived in Boston, there was a discount fabric store that I really liked shopping at called Sophisticated. Sophisticated. And then there was also a place that I really liked called Fabric Place Basement. They had just a really awesome variety of fabrics there. Here in San Francisco, I have not really done a ton of fabric shopping. I did go to Fabric Outlet in the Mission District not too long ago and I got some upholstery fabrics. I forgot to show you guys that. It's on a shelf right behind me. I got like five or six yards and it was $35 altogether. So I'll definitely go back there to do shopping for like apparel fabrics and stuff too. Other than that, I haven't really done a lot of online shopping for fabrics. I know that there are a lot of really great online shops and I do plan on doing that eventually. I think that at this point in sewing, I'm just starting to really get an understanding of how different types of fabrics behave and different blends of fabrics and what they feel like in different weights of fabrics. So I think shopping in person has been really helpful for me. So now I'm feeling a little bit more confident to eventually shop online for fabrics. Yeah, I wish that I could recommend some online shops to you guys, but I really haven't had much experience with online shopping for fabrics. Best tips for sewing knits. Do you have a serger for this? Also, what are your favorite must-have sewing tools? What brand or kind of thread do you use? Thank you. Having a serger is really great for knits. I don't think it is a necessity for using knits, especially if you're starting out. I wouldn't invest in a serger until you are sure you really love sewing and you need another machine on top of the one you already have. Yeah, use a zigzag stitch so that you can actually stretch your fabric. I would start really simple with knits. Make sure that you identify which part of the fabric has the most horizontal stretch so that when you're placing your pattern pieces to cut, then you know that the garment will actually stretch in the width around your body. Those are really the only tips that I have in terms of knits, but again, I'm going to try to link a video that's a little bit more detailed with other tips for using knits as well. And when it comes to the brand of thread that I use, this thread that I get at the fabric store, I use this a lot of the time. And then I also use Gutterman thread. My machine really likes the Gutterman thread, especially if I'm using cotton thread. I have used this brand of cotton thread with this type of thread there's just too much friction with my machine or the needle or something and it always cuts off the thread and for some reason the gutterman thread holds up a lot better in my machine when i'm using a cotton thread and i usually only use cotton thread if i think that i'm going to be dyeing the garment that i am sewing otherwise i'll just use polyester thread and either one of those brands works really well with my machine okay and then this is the last question regarding equipment do you recommend investing in a serger i'm just getting into making my own clothes and part of me wonders if I can really finish them as nicely without one. I don't think you need a serger. I definitely think you can finish clothes well enough with a regular sewing machine if you have a zigzag stitch. However, if you really want your clothes to have like that professional look from the inside, a serger is really great for that. I really love how a serger trims the edge as it's finishing the edge. I also just feel like the clothes that I've used a serger on have that extra durable feel to them. Whereas the clothes that I have finished with just a zigzag stitch, they do tend to fray still a little bit and I find little threads inside of my clothes sometimes. So yeah, I wouldn't say that you absolutely need a serger, but is it worth investing in if you're really into sewing? Yes, absolutely. Also, if you're going to be using knits, a serger is really great to have. I use my regular sewing machine combined with my serger on most of my projects, including knits. But yeah, I feel like having a serger has changed my life. I tell Patrick that all the time. I always thank him for my serger whenever I'm using it. It has just made all of my stuff feel more official, clean, and beautiful on the inside. Okay, so my voice is starting to go away because I have been talking for so long and that is the end of all the questions. If I forgot any questions, I'm really sorry. Thank you guys so much for asking so many good questions. It's been so fun to make videos to share with you guys. So I really wanted to do a Q&A to kind of just share more about myself and to answer questions that you guys have had. So I hope that this video has helped to answer some of those questions. I do have a lot of fun sewing projects coming up and I hope to record a lot of them. As I said before, 
are filming videos these days and sewing in general and finding time has become a little bit trickier lately but I appreciate you guys sticking around and if you have any ideas for future videos if you want to see that video of me explain the history of my arts and crafts life let me know in the comments I think that would be a really fun video to film so I think either way I'm gonna do that so hopefully you guys enjoyed that if you watched this whole video thank you so much I know this one is really really long I hope this video isn't unbearably long for you guys but now I'm just making it longer by rambling so I guess I will say goodbye to you guys okay so if you have not yet subscribed to my channel please consider doing that if you like this video then like this video and if you didn't like this video then I hope you like the next one all right you guys I hope you're having a good day and I will talk to you soon bye